Welcome back adventure riders. It's time to answer the burning question once more. What is the best adventure helmet of 2024? We've mounted all of our measuring equipment to our bike and sent our test rider out for countless test rides. So sit back, relax and follow along on our quest to find the very best adventure helmet of 2024. Good day everyone, I'm Tom from Champion Helmets and let's take a second to talk about the helmets we'll be featuring in this video. Adventure helmets are easily recognizable by the outward facing peak on their top side, which shields your face from things like branches and dirt. Alright, with that out of the way, let's have a look at the contenders we'll be featuring in this video. We've tested every high-end adventure helmet on the market and in this video we'll find out which helmet came out on top. Here we go. We'll start with our material segment and here we judge helmets with our material matrix which includes two different criteria. First we'll take a look at the material the outer shell is made of and second we check how many outer shell sizes a helmet is available in. A more compact outer shell not only looks better but is also more capable of protecting your head. Many outer shell sizes are beneficial because it makes sure the outer shell is more compact regardless of the size you choose. All right. Let's look at the results. We find two helmets tied for first place at the top of the list. But one is a carbon fiber helmet and the other is made of fiberglass composite. This means that the Hornet Adventure has one more outer shell size compared to the Explorer Carbon, ultimately ending up with the same score. Beneath the top two helmets is a four-way tie featuring very popular adventure helmets and this includes our newcomer, the Arite Tour X5, which has a pretty decent start as it places alongside the likes of the Climb Creels Pro. The star results start to dwindle as we go further down the list. Both the Nolan and the ADX2 are polycarbonate helmets and this material is not necessarily the worst, but definitely one of the heaviest materials helmets can be made of. Alright, that's it for material. Before we continue to our next segment, if you like this approach, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so we can keep testing helmets out on the road and make these guides. There's plenty more to go, so... Let's continue. We've arrived at our weight segment and the weight of a helmet is important because lighter helmets reduce the amount of strain on your neck and makes head movements lighter. This is especially noticeable on longer rides. It has to be noted that adventure helmets are generally the heaviest type of helmet due to the outward facing peak. First, a quick overview of how we come to our results. The lighter the helmet, the more stars it earns. Simple right? We weigh all of our helmets on the same scale in the size M without any additional features like a communication system installed. Right away, the Cryos Pro is the lightest and with some distance. With a weight of 1300 grams, the Cryos Pro is not only the lightest adventure helmet, but also one of the lighter helmets available across all helmet categories. Climb managed this weight with some very clever design choices like their Coroid EPS liner. And this EPS liner is different from what you see in most helmets because it's filled with holes and mostly consists of air. If you want to learn more about the Growls Pro, don't forget to watch our individual review on it. Definitely an interesting watch. So the top three helmets are all made of carbon fiber, really showing how effective this material is at reducing a helmet's weight. The helmets near the bottom of the list quickly get heavier and heavier, with the Nolan N72X closing out the list with a weight of almost 2 kilograms, one of the heaviest helmets we've ever seen on here. Anyways, that's it for weight, let's continue to the visor. Up next is our visor segment, where helmets can earn stars according to our visor matrix. This matrix consists of all kinds of visor features and other important characteristics. Naturally, not every visor feature is equally as important to your riding experience, which is why we've weighed them based on what riders ask us about the most. Let's look at the results. This time around, the top of the class is entirely made up of 2006 helmets, and these helmets are a bit newer compared to the bottom half of the list. The Schubert E2 has an excellent visor mechanism alongside a pinlock lens in the box and an internal sun visor. The ADF 9000 has a noticeably weaker visor mechanism but makes up for it with an additional dark smoke visor in the box. Almost every helmet scored well here apart from the Bell MX-9 Adventure. We have to give an unfortunate highlight for earning only two stars on this part. It's not pinlock lens prepared and doesn't have any other features to make up for that. Ouch. That's it for our visor segment, let's move on to our first road test segment, noise isolation. It's time to find out to what extent these adventure helmets are able to isolate the outside noise. We measure this by placing a decibel meter inside the helmet close to our test rider's ear. This device records the noise the same way as our rider hears it. We take our measurements from long stretches of open highway with an average speed of 130 km per hour. 
With these measurements, helmets can earn stars according to our noise isolation matrix. The lower the decibel, the quieter a helmet is and the more stars it earns. Alright, let's take a look at the results. This time around, the LS2 Explorer Carbon sits at the top of the chart with a very impressive result of 96 decibels. This average measurement makes it one of the quietest helmets we've ever measured. So, well done to LS2. The impressive results don't stop there. The Schubert E2 is only one decibel behind and the Kraus Pro and the ADF9000 closely follow as well. And you might be wondering if a single decibel difference is noticeable at all. And I can assure you that even though the results are very close, a single decibel makes a difference and is clearly audible out on the road. Right in the middle of our list is our newcomer, the Arai Turex 5, with a decent result of 100 decibels. From this point onwards though, we see the older helmets struggling to keep up, dropping all the way down to average measurements to 104 decibels from the HV AX9 and the MX9. Alright, that's it for noise isolation. If you're looking for a quiet helmet, I recommend checking out our quietest helmet of 2024 video. I'll leave a link in the description. We've arrived at ventilation. This segment is interesting because helmet manufacturers usually have widely different approaches for ventilation. For example, some brands prefer many tiny vents, while others prefer fewer but bigger air intakes. Time for us to test which ones came out on top. And we do this by installing a sensor inside the helmet that's connected to a thermometer. And this allows us to accurately measure the temperature inside the helmet. At the same time, we keep track of the outside temperature and compare the two. The smaller the difference between the outside temperature and the inside temperature, the better a helmet is able to ventilate and the more stars it earns. Now that's clear, let's take a look at the results. Okay, while the top of the list definitely shows some strong performances from the top three helmets, things quickly take a turn for the worst as we move further down the list. What these results tell us is that adventure helmets, in comparison to other helmet categories, can really struggle to keep your head cool. Among these poor performers, the ADF9000 really stands out and not in a good way. It also has an ECE 2206 certification like its counterparts at the top of the list but simply dropped the ball here as it closes the list with a temperature difference of plus 8. One of the hottest helmets we've ever tested and unfortunately we're not talking about looks. Those are some interesting results to say the least but that's it for ventilation. Let's move on to comfort. Naturally, the comfort of a helmet is very important. However, this segment does present a challenge for us as the level of comfort of a helmet is very difficult to measure in concrete data. Therefore, for this segment only we rely on the more than 17 years of riding experience of our test rider. He's also tested all the other helmets on our channel and can therefore make a comparison like no other. Furthermore, we also weigh in comfort features that a helmet comes with. Let's have a look at the results. Here, the Arai Turex 5 came out on top. The padding of the X5 is exceptionally soft and with this version Arai made the liner around the chin area less tight and this really makes it a joy to wear. It comes with all comfort features one could ask for and is the only adventure helmet to earn 5 stars for comfort. The helmets that came just below the Turex 5 were also extremely comfortable to wear and unfortunately the same can be said for the HV AX9 all the way at the bottom of the list. Our test rider noted that the overall feel of the helmet was subpar and therefore gave it a lower rating. Nonetheless, the competition was very intense here, which is a good thing to see. And this wraps up our comfort part, let's move on to our final test feature. This is our final test segment, and here we look at all the bells and whistles these helmets are equipped with. Here we follow our features matrix, and naturally not every feature is equally as impactful for your riding experience, so we've weighed these features based on what riders ask us about the most. For each feature, a helmet can earn stars. Now, let's take a look at the results. Our newcomer places at the top of the list yet again. The Turex 5 has every feature you can ask for in an adventure helmet. It's prepared for a communication system, has a quick release, is wind tunnel tested, glasses friendly, and has plenty of customizability options for its peak. The same can be said for the Schubert E2. This helmet actually has a chin bar that can be flipped up, making it both an adventure and a modular helmet in one. Its peak is also easily adjustable, it has speaker pockets, it's also wind tunnel tested, but the only feature the E2 does not have is an emergency quick release. Simply a very unique and interesting helmet. However, the rest of the list was not able to get more than 3 stars, which means that these helmets offer basic features like speaker pockets, a removable peak and maybe quick release pads, but don't offer anything else besides that. All in all, our adventure helmets had a decent performance here, 
but do leave some things to be desired. Let's briefly look back at how these helmets performed across the board. All right, time to put the scores side by side and get a general sense of how these helmets performed individually and as a category. Let's look at the results. This overview really shows how much our contenders struggled on ventilation. We discussed the results earlier and in this overview you can see how those results translated into stars. However, there are a lot of strengths to point out as well, like our material, visor and comfort segments. Keep an eye out for the two helmets at the top of the list as they seem to be the prime contenders to win the title. They both have strong performances across the board and if they lose out on stars in one segment, they make up for it in a different one. The same can be said for the LS2 Explorer Carbon and the Schubert E2. They both have one segment where they really struggled, but had excellent results in our other tests. It'll be interesting to see where they end up in our final ranking. And speaking of final ranking, we only have one more segment to go before we find out who takes the title. And that is our value for money segment. Alright, this is going to get interesting. Here, it's time to factor in the price of these adventure helmets. We've seen all of their performances, but weighing in the price offers a new perspective and tends to shake things up. Let's see how our contenders did. The results show that the Schubert E2 is our value for money champ. This helmet had great results across the board, with weight being its only weakness. And while the E2 is far from a budget-friendly helmet, its performances definitely make up for it. Our newcomer, the Arrive to Works 5, is in a similar situation. It cost close to 900 euros, so it needed some serious results to make up for that hefty price tag. And that's exactly what it did in our testing. It couldn't keep itself away from the top of almost every list. The Turex 5 has the highest average amount of stars across all of our contenders, so even though it's expensive, you'll still get your money's worth. Then I'd like to give a brief mention to the Explorer Carbon in third. In typical LS2 fashion, Dave may get another helmet that is significantly more budget friendly compared to his competition, but still managed to keep up on our test. It had strong performances across the board, but it does get held back by a very disappointing one star result on ventilation. Let's jump down to the bottom of the list where we find the AX9. This helmet had some surprisingly disappointing results on our test. So much so that they outweigh its 500 euro price tag and place it at the bottom of this list. That's it for our value for money ranking. Let's find out what all of this means. Here we go. It's time to reveal our final top 10 and find out which helmet takes the title of best adventure helmet of 2024. We'll start at the bottom to keep things interesting. In 10th place, we find the Bell MX9 Adventure. This budget-friendly helmet is only really viable as an entry-level option for those who are just starting out on a tight budget. It had poor performances across the board and wasn't able to stand out in a positive way. Then we have the AGV AX9 in 9th place. A surprisingly low placement for AGV standards, it did start off strong in the first half of our test, but as soon as we got to our road test segments, things quickly took a bad turn, placing at the very bottom of the list on noise isolation, ventilation, comfort and features. In 8th place goes to the Nolan N72X. This helmet is a budget friendly option, much like the MX9 in 10th, but actually had some standout performances, namely on our visor segment and on comfort. However, it also has some obvious weaknesses, with disappointing results on weight and ventilation. 7th place goes to the Scorpion ADX2, yet another budget friendly helmet, and its price tag is a bit lower compared to the N72X we just mentioned, but still performed a tiny bit better. Their results are nearly identical, but the ADX2 earned a star more ventilation, which is enough to place it higher on our final ranking. In 6th place, we find the Shoei Hornet Adventure. A very consistent helmet that managed to earn 4 stars in the majority of our tests. Unfortunately for Shoei, this helmet had a 1 star finish on ventilation and left some things to be desired on noise isolation as well and features, preventing it from placing higher on our final ranking. And 5th place goes to the Scorpion ADF 9000. This helmet had very similar performances to the Hornet Adventure we just mentioned, however it's more budget friendly, placing it ahead of the Hornet mainly due to its value for money rating. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows though for the ADF 9000 as it had the weakest score on ventilation. Alright, we've reached the top 4 and in 4th we find the LS2 Explorer Carbon. This all round helmet only has really one weakness which is its ventilation and like so many of our contenders, it earned a disappointing 1 star result in that segment. But apart from that, it had impressive results across the board, even earning 5 stars on noise isolation. Simply an excellent helmet from LS2. Now, on to our top 3. Who gets the bronze medal? And the answer is the Climb Creels Pro. A great high-end option for those with the money to spend. It's very popular among adventure riders and our test results show why that is. 
While most adventure helmets struggle on the scale, the Climb Cross Pro is extremely lightweight even by race helmet standards. It gets a score thanks to its Goroy technology, where all of the others have an EPS inner shell. Furthermore, it has an excellent visor, it's comfortable to wear and it's strong showings in our road test segments. Kudos to Climb. We're down to two helmets. Last year's winner, the Schubert E2 and the Arai Tour X5. Both of them had amazing performances throughout our testing, but only one can take the title. Let's find out who wins. Second place goes to the Schubert E2, which means that our newcomer, the Arai Tour X5, takes the title. The Schubert E2 is a unique and impressive helmet. It had an amazing score in our visor, noise, ventilation, comfort and feature segments. A solid all-round performer that is worn by many adventure riders across the globe. But it just barely gets beaten out by our newcomer, the Arai Tour X5. It's a successor to the popular Tour X4 and it's safe to say that Arai didn't waste a second in their development process. They improved their flagship adventure helmets on pretty much every aspect, ultimately resulting in a helmet with no real weaknesses. It's the most comfortable, has so many customization options, a great visor and good road test performances. Congratulations to Arai! And with that, our video comes to an end. Our work here is done and time for you guys to let us know what you think. The results were extremely close, especially in the top where our top helmets barely had any real weaknesses. Were you surprised by the results? Let us know in the comments below. Every helmet that we featured in this video is available at ChampionHelmets.com where we offer the lowest price guaranteed and have very sharp discount bundles. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. There's more videos like this coming up. Guys, buy smart, ride safe and until next time.